We are the true masters of the earth sphere. True death. Hey everybody, it's your boy Sleepwalker, the man who walks through dreams, and we are back with episode 27 of the 2 Deaf Podcast. We are uh, here to talk about games and uh, state some names. I really was just trying to rhyme with that, I didn't really have risk going anywhere. But, uh, let's introduce our other co-host. Uh, go ahead, boys. What is up, everybody? This is John, a.k.a. J. Poet. Um, I tell you what, this beautiful weather puts me in a good mood every single time. Um, it's been a while since we've been back on the podcast, and we are happy to be back. Uh, we got A. Shane with us today, man. What's up, all? Yes, sir. Also, Shane here, Loose Thing 22, the only one. <laughs> I, I'm only you know, me. No, I keep it short and simple. There's only one of me, one of you. <laughs> There's three of me. The, tr- oh. the Trinity. No, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> there, there, used to, there used to be three of me, but I've, we met in one spot, and I fought them all to the death. And I was <laughs> one. Ooh, glitch in the time matrix, huh? <laughs> My timeline is the strongest. Anyway. Um, what do you guys been playing? Maybe just go ahead and start. I'll, I'll go ahead. I'll, I've been playing uh, Dragon Quest Eleven. Are oh, you still playing that? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm I kind of treating it like cyberpunk. You know, I'm just going through the whole story and listening to it and trying to hit every mission through each thing through each act as possible. Oh yeah, that's a long game too. That game is lengthy. Yeah. It's a good game to do that with though. Yeah, it is. Definitely. What about you, John? Well, man, I'll tell you, I actually officially beat Super Mario Odyssey today on Mario Day. Happy Mario Day, everybody, by the way. Happy Mario Uh, Day. It's a shame the last podcast we had about two weeks ago, we dove into Mario quite a bit. So uh, we should have had the forethought to think about saving that soul today. But but, uh, I officially beat Super Mario Odyssey. I was at Bowser's Castle last I'd stopped. I didn't realize that I got to actually become Bowser. <laughs> uh, I thought that was pretty dope. Um, so, yeah, I beat Mario on, Mario on Mario Day, which I thought was cool. And I've been playing a little bit of God of War here or there. Um, not as much as I want to, but now that Mario is done, I will be diving into God of War uh, fully. Might be streaming some tonight, actually. And um, and then, of course, Dungeons & Dragons, man. We're all in on this Dungeons & Dragons. we got two different campaigns going, and... Uh, I am loving the questing, man. What about you, Sleep? I have been playing uh, Persona 5 Strikers. Uh, I was uh, going ahead and getting through that. I had a little uh, back injury, uh, sciatica. It's not really an injury. It's just an ongoing chronic thing. And so I was just sitting there playing Persona 5 Strikers, which I uh, thoroughly enjoy because they tried very much to make it like Persona 5, the RPG. Which is, uh, it's good. It's good. There's some things that just don't translate very well, especially like the fights, because they're kind of messy. But at the same time, they, everything else they nail with the RPG aspects and everything. But I'd also like to take about one more game that is taken uh, Steam and somewhat Twitch by storm. It's an indie, little indie game called Loop Hero. It's pretty dope. Even for, for a game where you don't really have much control over it because it's basically about this little dude who's walking around one infinite loop and you're the dungeon master so you're putting stuff there for him to fight and everything like that and you're trying to get him to get through the loop and stuff like that and i have to say i'm pretty impressed for a game that's just pixel art it's mostly you don't have control over and it's pretty dope sounds Man, like this movie whole... i've been watching <laughs> what's the movie uh it's called boss level Oh, I just saw a commercial for that. It's the dude who keeps dying. Yeah. Yeah. He dies, relives the same day, dies every single day, and then he's got to find, like, a loop to get... There's, like, one certain thing for him to do to get out of that loop. Yeah. It's, it's kind of but like... But then that. it's fucked up because at the end of it, when he breaks the loop, he still has to resume that day. <laughs> and, oh. and then make it out. Like... Yes. Well, it's it's a really popular it's a really popular game style these days. I mean, uh, Death Loop's coming out this year, which we're gonna you know we're gonna get into that a little bit. But there's a, there's a whole lot of other games that are coming out. It always goes back to me to Majora's Mask because it was the same kind of situation where you had like the seventy two hour loop or whatever, mm-hmm. or forty eight hour loop. See, Majora's but, uh, Mask was a roguelike for real, bro, because you had to go back so many times duh, that that yeah. you just had to restart so many times. I feel like that was a roguelike, bro. But it's it's a it's a popular like thing now. Like there's a bunch of these loop games where you're constantly you know 
looping through the same day multiple times. There's, you know, probably a good four or five games out yeah. uh, in the last six months that have been that, you know, that style It makes good puzzle thrillers. So, like, people who like good puzzle thrillers, it's like there's a one uh, on VR. It's called The Dark Room. Mm. And it's like a big puzzle. You just got to figure out all these little trinkets and puzzles and everything, which is really awesome. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, the roguelike is taking over. And there's a roguelike that actually dropped for um, – the PlayStation, it hasn't dropped for the PlayStation 5. It's going to drop. It's called Returnal. We'll talk about that later when we talk about the state of play. But, um, yeah. Yeah. But, but it, man, I, I wanted to, before we dive in, I just wanted to kind of, you know, uh, cover some of the stuff that's happened since last time we talked. Um, we did have our uh, Rocket League tournament. Uh, mm-hmm. It was Sorry. awesome. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was definitely a blast, man. It was uh, nice. It went, went a lot faster than we anticipated, but uh, it's a good thing because everything ran so smoothly. Um, but uh, shout, shout out to everyone who participated, man. We really appreciate that. We're, we're definitely wanting to have another uh, Rocket Tournament, uh, Rocket League tournament um, in the future for sure. Yeah, uh, that was definitely fun. Definitely, I enjoy being able to commentate and say. And, and I also have to kind of wonder why Call of Duty doesn't have such like a simple tournament system, while Rocket League, an indie game that's like fifteen dollars or twenty dollars, has like a bomb tournament system. Like so. Well, yeah. Call of Duty will eventually start making a tournament system that you have to pay extra for. <laughs> it's, it's DLC, It's going to be a DLC. Yep. <laughs> it's DS extra content. And then bro. you still have to pay a monthly fee on top of that. Yeah. And, yeah. It's, it, and it's only 60 meg download. <laughs> so, and they'd be like, it's $5 to complete the final bracket. What? <laughs> yeah, we got to put you on a dedicated server. <laughs> All that trash. All that triple A trash. <laughs> <laughs> they used to, they used to do that. What was it? Modern Warfare Three. You could actually, or is it Battlefield, where you can actually rent a private server for a day? Oh, I'm I I don't know which one, but I I still guarantee it's one of those. I like 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 I re- you remember when uh sounds dope though. You remember when uh what's it the new um oh, what are you called um. I forget it. I forget what it is. It was the open world Wildlands. It has something Wildlands. What was it called? It was like a Tom uh, Clancy game. Ghost Recon. Yeah, Ghost Recon. Ghost Recon Wildlands. Yeah, but now if the, the newest Ghost Recon that came out, did you you remember when it first came out and they let you literally buy a skill tree? Like, <laughs> wow. they was just, it the point break? Yeah, point break. They sold the skill tree. Or break point. Break point. Yeah, break right. point. It was break point. They sold the skill tree, bro. <laughs> they sold it to you. Like, what? Why play the game? <laughs> that one was a little bit more of a stealthy game, and too, anyways. It didn't really have a good following like uh, Wildlands did. Yeah, it did. I feel man. like the Ghost, the Ghost Recon series has had so much potential, but I, every time I play it, I'm just like, uh. uh. Tom Clancy games in general in this past five, six, ten five to ten years has actually gained a lot of momentum, especially with, like, the division and everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Siege, the, Siege is huge, bro. Yeah, Siege, Siege is real Yeah, good. and Rainbow Siege, all of them, dude. Rainbow Six, all that stuff, you know. They make, I guess I could say this, they probably make one of the best militarized games. With Tom Clancy, yeah. Because, than anybody. Because I really liked uh, the last Splinter Cell before they stopped making them. That was actually pretty good, like... Yeah. I, yeah. was, I I enjoyed that. Yeah, I was about to bring that. You you read my mind. Sleep. <laughs> well, John, let there's us rumors. Take... There's, ru- there's rumors. There's are supposed to be bringing it back. Bringing back Splinter Cell? Like I don't know, man. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, I guess that. Like the thing is, I wish I could trust Ubisoft. But like, didn't they have a crossover with uh, Splinter Cell and Portal? Uh, a Portal? What? No, I what? Be- I believe it was Splinter Cell and Wildlands, or, or, or um, you know, Ghost Recon. I know they did that. I don't know it about might have been. It might have just been the skin. Yeah, because I don't know about them in uh I, they had a predator thing in Ghost Recon too, which is actually pretty cool. Like, you know, I I think those are good ideas. Y'all got to think since video game. games came out, think of how many video games we've already done played through our lifetime and still haven't even touched a page. You know, still haven't even got a whole page filled out of what we played and how much <laughs> there's still left to play. Oh man! I bet I, I bet I have a page. A page of games that you played in recent. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think I have to. Go I can send it to him. Like when I look at my uh, catalog or my history in my PlayStation, it kind of astounds me how many games I have. The uh, you know for me though, I will say you know something we talked about briefly before, and 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 we're going to touch onto this when we get into the Halo uh, conversation later. But um, you know, I went through a phase where I kind of stopped playing regular games and I only like exclusively play first person shooters or whatever. Mm. And of course, you know, luckily for me, there's multiple ones out and there's a new one out every year, so it, it kept the the number of games that I've played total keep going. But um, since I've taken this hiatus from uh, multiplayer games. Because uh, Call of Duty is just kind of annoying me at this point. I've gotten like, like probably six games, or no, no, I guess it's more like five games that I've start rather started playing or have beat it single player games since I've stopped playing uh, mm-hmm. last March. So it's like, yeah. you know, less than less than yeah, year I can, beaten, well over five. I can say the same thing. And then that, and those games are including Breath of the Wild and Cyberpunk yeah. and some of these really long games, you know. So it's it's. Yeah. Um, so I, I I agree with that. Like, cause I have a uh, yeah, I've always been playing those games, but I think I've taken the deeper plunge into like I literally feel like I only play indie games now. Like, it's hard for me to play a triple A game now. I've like I play almost entirely indies now. Like, well, that's because you're an you're an internal you're an internal critic, and it's easier to criticize a triple A AAA game than it is an indie game. If an indie game has some issues, you're like, well, it's an indie. Game. Yeah, you know, when it's, a, when it's a triple A game, they're like, you should do better, you trash. Yeah, because they should. Man. If you, like, let's be real. Let's be real. You could take Rocket League as an example. These cats have a $20 game that they gave for free for the first, like, two months of its cycle, right? And they have features that these million dollar companies can't seem to put in. You know, it's just, you well, know. Well, then they turned around and gave it out for free again. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I'm saying. Like, these companies can put it in, they just don't want to, or they want to charge you for it. While you have any games giving you a whole bunch of content for basically the the initial price of the game. You know, so I like I, I just feel that that has to weigh on every decision when it comes to AAA games versus indies. Yeah, but that's how you start though too, brother. That's true. You know, once you get the masses once you get the masses behind you and you know, you got that cult following, you're gonna become bigger. That's true, but you can't lose your side, like, side of it. Like, like, let's take uh, Souls, for instance, you know. And I didn't want to cut you off, John. I know you're about to talk. Um, no, no, you're good. Uh, I, um, I take Souls, for instance. You know, uh, Miyazaki, he came from that, like, low point, too. And he hasn't left his integrity when he makes a game. Because Souls has DLC, right? But they don't have day one DLC. And the DLC is substantial and cheap. And there's only, like, one of them every time. You know, it's it's one of those things that it can be done. It just depends on where your priorities are. Like, do you want to make art or do you want to make money? You know, I mean, it's, for example, make money like, say, uh, what is it, Super super Hot? Super Shot or whatever? Super Hot, yeah. That's an indie game, and that thing's exploded. I mean, yeah, it's true. there they gave out for free now on a lot of platforms, especially like on VR platform, it's $30. Oh, I bet that's so dope on VR. Oh, it's intense. <laughs> you ever played Super Hot, John? I have not. You have not? Oh, dude, you got to check it out. It's one of those games that it's like, it's really simple kind of action puzzle game, but you'd really get into it. Yeah, every time you move is when the scene moves, but if you stop, then the whole scene stops. Oh, that's pretty dope. I, I'd be down to it. Is it ava- what is it available on? I think everything. <clears throat> you can get it on Game Pass. Yeah, you can get it on pretty much everything now. I mean, I'll tell you, just talking about this with the AAA games and, and all these, these studios and stuff, it, it just reminded me of this all the stuff that's been going down the last couple of months with Stadia. Have you guys <laughs> have you guys been keeping track of this and what's happened with them? Uh, you mean the uh, slow de-evolution of, hey, what's up, uh, Joe? I mean, I'm sorry, Dean. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I can call you, your name not Joe. <laughs> like, like, but, uh... That's his... That's his secret alias. He's hiding. <laughs> He's hiding, Hi- hiding from the insurance boys. <laughs> so I'm hiding on I Facebook. I don't get too much with the Stadius because, again, I'm kind of in a different type of mm-hmm. other system right now that I'm exploring. You know, recently just got the Oculus Quest 2. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you know, so well, that's like, kind of taking a lot more stuff away from other systems right now. Well, see, Stadia, like when they first came out, there was a lot. There was a whole lot of hype around them. There was a lot of potential there. But, man, they. They, they've really shit the bed, bro. They oh, so they they went around and 
and snatched up a whole bunch of developers from all of these other top studios around gaming, you know, and made their own gaming studio. They hired, they hired, they hired like 150 developers, like something ridiculous. And then they turned around and closed down their own gaming studio less than a year later. Right, with, so no, with no games to speak of. No right, games to speak no of. no games to speak of. And so now they're only making third-party games. But they took all these these developers from all these other companies and it's like, oh, less than a year later, we'll let you go. It's just like... Dude, but the, these, their whole business tactic was crap from the beginning. Bro, they actually approached bigger developers to make like games for them but they weren't offering them anything to be on their platform so they're basically just saying hey be on our platform all right so why um you get to be online i get to be online anywhere um and they just don't have anything they didn't like have anything to persuade bigger developers to come on their platform it was a failure from the beginning <laughs> like they just like that'll be microsoft that'll be microsoft's next pickup <laughs> well, Microsoft don't need them because Xbox already has uh, cloud gaming. So if you download the uh, Xbox uh, Game Pass app, every you have Game Pass. I mean, yeah. half the half the games you don't even need a controller no more. It's a touch screen. Like if Microsoft were to go fully like a, like a service like that, bro, they would destroy Stadia and they would compete with Steam. Like. You know, because they they're just they already have such a you know an ingrown fan base and and they already have a no, way. No, man, man, I'm playing console games mm. on my cell phone. That's dope. Yeah, that's crazy. See, that's dope, man. Like the thing is, Xbox, man. I think like and this is just me. Like I wish they would just go all digital, like because, bro, like you don't need that system. You do so many other things, man. <laughs> like if you don't need that. Take so over it's Steam. the perfect it's the perfect segue, Sleep. I've been worried. I've been like waiting on this moment that I can talk shit to you because <laughs> because for the longest time he's said pretty much what he just said. Mm. Why does why does Xbox even make a console? You can get all their games on a computer. You might as well just buy a PC. Yeah. And that and now PlayStation's doing the same thing. The, yeah. the a majority of their exclusives are going to be released released on PC. That's true. And, you know. The, and they've done it in the past, you know, but they waited a couple of years and then they released the PC or whatever. Yeah. But that now they're going to start releasing these games onto the PC just like Microsoft did. Yeah, so, I'm now I'm I'm pretty sure that PlayStation will stagger the release just so they can get theirs before they um, PC does it because that's what they do with a lot. Like that's what they did with Neho and a few other games that went to PC for PlayStation that were like not exactly exclusive, but they weren't really on any other console. You know, like, <clears throat> uh, they've done that a couple times. They kind of stagger the release. But, honestly, that just makes PC the the uh, uh, preferred platform. Yeah. I mean, it's it, ma it makes it an even, pla you know, even more of an even playing ground between PlayStation and Xbox, too, you know? Yeah. Um, but, but every you know, system. I, I read that, uh, that uh, the um, Horizon, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn Forbidden West or whatever, I heard mm -hmm. that's coming straight to the PC as well, so... Uh, hopefully it did better than its PC release of the first one because I heard that didn't go very well. But I like uh, I like seeing how the mighty have fallen and now they're doing the same thing. That I, mean, the I mean, you know, they, 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 they like the thing is when you're ahead, you don't really fall. So you could just be like, hey, you know, here, you can have some too. No, no. But yeah, when, no, you, so when, when you're like what, what at happened? the back of the line, like... <laughs> like when you're at the back of the line talking about, hey, I got stuff too, guys. That's Xbox. So, so <laughs> let me give you an let me give you a good analogy here. What's happened is, is PlayStation was out in front in Mario Kart, and all they could get was coins and bananas, and it wasn't helping them out. And then here comes Xbox with a blue show called Game Pass, and it just <laughs> knocked the shit out of PlayStation, and they passed them. Now they're in first place. Oh yeah, well you know what it what happened was they hit PlayStation and PlayStation fell back to second, but Xbox was still in seventh, and they actually <laughs> haven't gotten closer. So, so it was just a worthless blue show. Like, <laughs> like, like, no, but for real, he's, he's at, he's at, they're actually that annoying that annoying cloud guy that throws ink on your. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's just the whole thing no. where it hits everybody Didn't with lightning. PlayStation Two just get rid of their basically a multimedia platform. Was it still doing that? So it, With PlayStation I've 2? Seen, I was reading something that PlayStation was getting rid of like their uh, TV and movie aspect of Oh, yeah. System. Yeah, I think they may be because I, they weren't doing anything with it. It was garbage. No one cared. Like, 
No one cared. Even like I'll give you this. Like Xbox Game Pass kills PlayStation Now. PlayStation Now has gotten better since its beginning, but Xbox Game Pass kills it, man. Because PlayStation ain't trying to give up those new titles. They'll they'll trickle out the titles after it's been out for a while, but Xbox will put new titles on it. Which is one thing that, See, you know, they Well that's the relief of it. Microsoft buying up all these damn companies and everything now because it's going to be under the mic, you know, the Xbox umbrella, and then it's going to be an Xbox exclusive game, and it's going straight to Game Pass. So I'm saving sixty bucks every other month. That's true. I mean, like I can't deny that. Um, that is a really good deal. The only thing Xbox, and this is just real talk, not doing the bullshit, you know, uh, what's it called, console wars thing, but. The one thing Xbox needs to do is just, like, they can make games that are good. They just need that hype that PlayStation gets when they drop their games. Because check it. Demon Souls came out when the PlayStation 5 dropped. Bright, uh, was it Bright Memory Infinite came out when the Xbox dropped? And, like, literally no one cared. Well, I guarantee you uh, Game Pass subscriptions are going to probably triple, if not quadruple, when Halo come out. Yeah. Oh, I, I guarantee you. Oh, I guarantee you, too. You know, it's just thing. And Halo is one of those games they have hype behind. You know, it's one of those things. If they just need more games like, uh, what's it called, Halo and uh, Fable, would they have that hype behind it? Because a lot of the other games they have that are introducing Gears. don't really have the hype. <laughs> ah, Gears lost the but, hype, bro. I, they, they yeah, did. but when Gears Five came out, their subscriptions did double. Yeah, true. There was now, uh, Gear, Gears has definitely stepped back some, and plus they just had Gears Five, so it'll be a while before they come out for Gears Six. But mm. uh, Halo, you know. You have people like me who I, I would be available to get Halo just on the Game Pass when they have to pay a dime, but I'm going to go buy the physical copy anyway just so I can have it. You know what I mean? So they're going to get double. They're going to be double dipping on me for Halo. Nerd. Not really because you're just still paying your subscription for Game Pass. I mean, yeah, you bought the game outright, but I mean, you're still paying for, ultimately, you're still paying for Game Passes, which is Xbox Live and all the other titles. So you're right. well, that, not really that's double what I, dipping no matter well, what. You're still paying the same shit. Well, that's what I meant about them kind of double dipping with me because they got my Game Pass monthly subscription. That's all that's necessary. But then I'm going to go buy. I'll probably get the damn collector's edition. Uh, yeah, that's what I was saying. That's how you know you're like. I was going to ask. Uh, this is how you know you're a real fan. Are you getting the collector's edition? Like, are you getting like the biggest edition you could get? I probably will. I got the collector's edition of Gears Five. I, uh, uh, I'll, I'm definitely going to get the. the the Halo uh, collector's edition. Oh, right. I mean, that's the only way I, I'm gonna buy physical. Yeah, I'm so pumped about that game, bro. Like that's that's like, I just want to go ahead and publicly apologize to my wife uh, <laughs> right now because we come the fall of this year, I'm going to be an absentee husband. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, it's probably gonna disappoint. No, <laughs> you're like, where's John at? He hasn't came out the fucking basement in like three, four days. I'm like, what? Um, you go so, down there. He got his little line man going and everything. <laughs> <laughs> he's going in, bro. He's uh, he's got the team logo on Halo right on his chest. <laughs> what, what, shit that's, down there. What sucks about multiplayer games though is that the first few days when they first come out, they're always ridden with the problems. You know? Oh yeah. So like. When, when a single player game comes out, I feel confident that like if I wanted to take a couple of days off work or I use vacation days so I can like really sit down and enjoy it off the bat, I feel comfortable doing that. But with like multiplayer games, like I think it might have been Cold War or maybe it was Modern Warfare, I can't remember. Is I went and got it and oh, I was um, off the next. I was I was off the next day, so I was like super pumped to be able to play it. And the, literally the whole night and the next like the night the, the night of it kind of worked a little bit, had some issues. Within well, the next day, the servers were down like the whole day. It yeah. was like. Man, the, if I would have used the vacation day for that day, I would have been pissed. Bro, online, yeah, it was Cold War. It was all the titles, man. Ever since, what was it, Black Ops 4, Cold War? Yeah, they all, releases, they, it all was shambles. Oh, uh, bro, online is such a different environment, bro, because it's not even just Call of Duty. Fighting games come out, and their online is garbage, bro. It's horrible. And that's a lot of games, bro, because online is just such, it's a different beast. Because when you make a single-player game, all the elements in the single-player game are already accounted for. But there's chaotic mm. elements in the uh, in the multiplayer that can't really be accounted for until they arrive. So True. you they volume and everything exactly. That's why they got to beta test it first, and that's why they have to send it out, pressure test it, make sure it it doesn't 
the uh, server doesn't well, see, collapse. That's John's right and everything too. It's better with a single player because you're not the volume of one person's not that hard to handle. Yeah, and everything in it is already planned, so there's not going to be any chaotic elements. Everything there is already there. Now, now you could come out like Cyberpunk, which is a good game, but let's, be, the same <laughs> but let's be real. Like, it was a good game, but let's be real. Like you know, like <laughs> they had some issues when it came out, and they're not the only one. <laughs> They're not the only Assassin's Creed did the same shit as well as um who was um, several other games I can't like like Far Cry dude Far Cry had a fatal error where it wouldn't even start like if you bought it online if you got the digital copy it wouldn't even start and it took them a week to fix it well it's it's we talked Far about Cry this in the previous five well, uh, we about five five no four we four, four. Had no problem no no it. it was four. I was we, uh, we talked about this in a previous podcast, though, but it just blows my mind. Like, I really would kind of have thought that, you know, that the pandemic wouldn't have really affected the gaming industry as much as it has. Um, I mean, it's it's really set so many things back. And um, I, could, I just got to figure it would help it. Uh, I mean, I know it's helped us. Um, but I guess when you have developers and stuff working from home, it, it's, it gets a lot more tricky than when you have like groups of people in the office together all being able to brainstorm on something in person. You know, it's a lot yeah. different. Than... Yeah, it's different because doing a Zoom call, a uh, development meeting, is different than doing one live action in front of each other. You know, like it's just different. There's a different feeling, too. There's a different motivation, like you're saying, when you're sitting there with a team in an office, you know, 10, 12 hours a day grinding and instead of being at home and you're like, pajamas <laughs> it's true you know coffee pot next to you don't even have to worry about really nothing it's a whole different feeling man yeah, yeah for sure you know, different sense of urgency exactly you know and as some people get it done but you know i guess because there's games coming out they got games coming. a lot of games have been delayed but there's still games coming out so you know some people can get it done but it is it's always going to be a little bit more difficult but I hope they took the time though too to develop their their skill better, you know, being able to code better, being able to have that, you know, comfort and not having to have you know boss down your back and shit like that. I could think about their DLC. How when they come out? Yeah, how you know when they, how how far has their development came through this too though? This that's what we're going to be seeing these next couple of years. Yeah. Well, I think I think that Cyberpunk was so highly publicized, all of the the errors and issues that that, that game had, um, it was so highly publicized that I think every single game studio is going to take notice of that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like yeah, it's, everyone, thing... everyone everyone trashed Halo when they just, when they got a little bit of feedback from the first release or, or the first reveal, mm. and people were giving them hell for Craig and all this other stuff, and so they pushed it back, and everybody was like giving them hell about it. Well, then, and then, you know, Cyberpunk came out and it looked like it was actually a very smart decision on 343's uh, part. So. Oh, I agree. I think 343 really should have did that, dude. Because the thing is, when you drop your, <clears throat> you're dropping your, you're dropping your main game here, the game that everybody came for, and you drop it and it gets an underwhelming response, that should tell you you have to, you know, we need to cook this a little more. So what was they doing with all the delays, though? I'm just saying, like, yeah. How, what was this, the game, Cyberpunk was delayed, what, six months? Oh, bro, it's, well, it's, it was, it was years in development. It was, dela- it was delayed three times before Yeah, time. yeah, but, and yeah, it was so. years, it was also years in development with <laughs> that, too, you know, so, like, people were waiting for it and waiting for it, and then they said it was going to come out, and then they had to push it back and Man, push it back. And the only reason that game started selling is because everybody wanted to make their, they wanted to make a dick or boobs, that was it. <laughs> Well, that oh, was the whole highlight of the game. I, oh, that was this, my and, how, is, and how disappointing was that? Yeah, it was exactly incredible. Two disappointing. options. Yeah, and, and plus, like it never like, came into the. I game. got a freckle on mine. Why can't I put a freckle on mine? <laughs> like, <laughs> and the thing is, you they didn't have anything to do with the game. You never used it. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like, yeah, like you never got it to had see no it. aspect to the game. Yeah, so it was just like uh, just worthless cosmetics and uh i think the thing is but they hype the game up way too hard what up al hey, hey what's up Ali, me, man? Ali, Ali, I'm sorry. what's up i need to put on my glasses i call him al what's up <laughs> like, they put on my glasses bro thanks for watching he brother said al. <laughs> i couldn't see it my uh, my uh with my feeble eyes my feeble so, old eyes 
get let's get through this. So I know we was wanting to talk about um, you know, what games you know we're excited for too. Well, yeah, well, out. I'll, I'll tell you. Hold hold your thought on that, also. I'm gonna save that to be kind of last. Um, we we have one more thing I want to talk about before we dive into that. Um, and it's something that we've actually been meaning to kind of address um, for months now. I mean, hell, I guess it's at least been two months. Uh, but we've, we've just had a kind of themed podcast this whole time, so we've never really been able to fit it in uh, within the hour. But uh, there's big news about the Star Wars, EA, Ubisoft situation. And so now Star Wars is kind of open again. And there's just a prepara, just a, a, a million different types of possibilities um, for different type of Star Wars games, uh, for different, uh, uh, you know, companies to come in and start start, you know, making Star Wars games. So I just thought that it would be a really cool thing um, to kind of pose the question to you guys and to everybody here in the um, um, in the in the chat here um, of what kind of Star Wars game would you like to see? You know, what what kind of style of game? What's kind of like the backstory of the game? What what would be the ideal Star Wars game? Um, <laughs> Ali, I, Ali, I appreciate that, bro. But uh, we we <laughs> we're, we're we're good. Bro. We're good, bro. I, I appreciate the. The, uh, the offer though mm. well, nice self, uh, sure. but it, but it, yeah yeah good, good try the, the yeah. um but what, what kind of star wars games would you guys like to see hmm well, who wants to go first like if i were to go for like there's two games i'd like build to build a game right now there's two games i'd like to see with star wars at least for me i'd like to see a fighting game with it's made competently not like the old fighting game they made that was one of the worst fighters that's ever existed, but a good one. Like, maybe made from Namco, the Soul Calibur team could do it or something like that. I think a good fighting game, a 3D fighting game with them would be good. And then, also, I'd like to see a roguelike. I'd like to see a roguelike where you get to either choose between a Mandalorian, a Jedi, or, you know, any any other kind of, like, maybe a Wookiee or something like that. And then you any just get species in the Star Wars. Yeah, and then you just basically get power ups as you go through it. You can get a lightsaber or you know a blaster and other power ups from like Star Wars and stuff as you go through it and get to the final boss, which is like maybe a Sith or something like that. Maybe not Darth Vader, just a regular Sith. I, I'd rather not use the regular cannon anymore. I think the regular cannon should die. Oh, the Skywalker saga. Yeah, just just let it go. Let it go. The world is more interesting than that right now. Oh, there's yeah. so many things. There's so much lore you could dive into. Yeah. Well, you go, uh, Austin. What are you, what are you, what are you talking about? Mine would be more rogue, open world, like, basically, like, choice type thing. Like, you, you know, this actually has out, you know, choices that through what gameplay actually will have outcome. Like, so if you're, like, help this type, you know, that's a good deed. So you kind of lead more towards the Jedi type thing. So, you know, you kind of have like a meter of what light, you know, what side you're kind of running towards. Hmm. But then, you know, you can be any species you want to be that's in the thing. You know, you kind of go on actual, you know, missions to like, you know, you start out as a damn, you know, hustler and everything, you know, just doing cargo here and there and all that, or, you know, stealing. And then you kind of like hit this road you know, in the path where, like, hey, you you kind of became, you have the the ability, you know, for the force, and that's when you kind of can venture into that or continue to do what you're doing. It's just kind of whole free flow type thing. Hmm, kind of like Skyrim like thing. Kind of, but more, but it does have like an objective type thing. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay, so there's so it's just kind goal. of like, pro, yeah, there's like pretzels of missions you can do you know but you don't have to do well, them all well it sounds a lot like uh you know star wars Knights of the old republic which is probably one of the best games star wars has ever made um i and i think some of the aspects that you said was a little bit different and i think it would add a lot of flavor to it i uh you know just a, a simple a simple remake of Knights of the old republic would be dope as hell you know what i'm saying like on the new graphics the new systems and everything like that and being an open world game like you said we can kind of choose your path between the light side and the dark side like you see, you go in that route too. You're able to make your own story yeah. because, like you said, you want to get off the paths of things where you know Star Wars fans try to hold on to to one you know story, one plot. Mm -hmm. With that, you could kind of get off that plot and be able to 
create your own type of saga, should I say? Yeah. Well, so hear me. Out. So hear me out. Star Wars roguelike, mm-hmm. and the the whole premise is Bubba Fett escaping from the Scarlet Pit. <laughs> and it's just, it's just him getting out of the Scarlet Pit. Yeah, and, and it could just fill in his story of where he was at up until the Mandalorian. And so every time you die, you go back to the bottom of the Sarlacc pit, and you gotta get back out. <laughs> yeah, yeah like, <laughs> I think that would be dope. That would the, be dope. Uh, uh, that'd be crazy. But the uh, I would like a, a game like what Austin said about the, the Knights of the Old Republic kind of style game, but like, like it's like, it's like you said, kind of get rid of the, the the Skywalker saga that everyone's used to, and kind of get back into the old school stuff. Maybe visit like a young Yoda. Or you know Darth Raven, or you know uh, all of these other like awesome stories, or the Gray Jedi. Yeah, um, exactly. you know, all, all of these different stories that they haven't really explored, really that you can really open up into in, in an open world game. Yeah. And um, you know what? It could be super dope. You know what? Also, would be a good one a a solo Obi Wan game, where you just follow Obi Wan from the beginning to the to where uh, to where he dies. Or a Han Solo game would be cool, too. That could be cool. I feel like Obi-Wan would be cooler because he did cooler things. And he has a lot longer of a game because he fought Darth Maul in the in the clone wars and like darth maul would be like the biggest enemy in the game because you all would have like four or five fights before you finally kill him on tatooine which is literally so, dope it would be dope that, that would that would be a good idea mm. but i think the possibilities are endless man and it's exciting to just even think about the fact that there's all these studios out there that could pick up a star wars title and just run with it so yeah i hope yeah. ubisoft <laughs> Really hits it because the dude. The thing is, Ubisoft, man. Like, I like to. I like Ubisoft games, but they have a bit of a problem with being way too formulaic and overstaying their welcome. Meaning that they yeah. have a game that's like fifty hours when the game was done at twenty five. You know, like that's how that's how I'm feeling about the Assassin's Creed Valhalla right we, now. You know, so. I enjoyed Fallen Order too. I mean, that's that was a pretty good. That was Star game. Wars game too. Yeah, and that was EA, which is surprising because you know you didn't have to pay anything extra. So, like, I think that was pretty good of them, and hopefully they learned their lesson in the, you know, Star Wars games. Well, not Star Wars games because they lost that, but games from now on out will have less of that so they won't get so much ire from everybody. But I'm just really hoping Ubisoft knocks it out of the park with this Star Wars game. Well, you know, uh, Fallen Order was awesome, but then if you go back to, uh, what is it, Rogue Scott Squadrons that just came out recently, and then you have, um, and then the... Uh, Battlefront. Battlefront, yeah, those are two disappointments. I mean, oh, the Rose Garden has so so much potential, but it just. I, bro, I played it over at Taylor's house. Shout out to Taylor. I, I played it over Taylor's house. Bro, Battlefront was so bad it caused a revolution, like. <laughs> like gamers. Now, John Squadrons. I'm sorry, Sleepy, but Squadrons is different in the VR though. See, like some games that they have in, they try to push on these consoles, but it's a VR game. Mm-hmm. Like playing Squadron in VR is, bro. Like, I could see how. Yeah, that you, you think you feel the G forces, and you need a bucket next to you to throw up in. <laughs> that sounds great. Like you know, like a nice intense <laughs> experience. Hey, you know, Vader Immortal is also a VR game. Yeah, yeah I want to play that. That sounds that sounds pretty dope. That does look dope. Like, There's a bunch of Star Wars games. Um, and they all come out in episodes and everything. But yeah, they're. I haven't got one yet. I'm going to explore into it. But, yeah, there's a lot of them that look really actually interesting. Like, I want well, I, I want to be the, right the guy that owns the mining uh, thing on Mustafar after um, Obi-Wan and Anakin fought on it and shit like that. I want to be him trying to rebuild his business after they fucked it up. That's a good game. <laughs> like, He's sitting there making a Star Wars GTA. <laughs> yeah, like, no, the Star Wars. It'll be like, it'll be like Go buy buildings. Yeah, he's like roller coaster tycoon, but he's like building the city back up. Yeah, after they destroy it, it's not, you know they had a game, and I know this is off subject. They had a game where you are the survivor of a Godzilla attack. That's actually brilliant, though. Yeah, but it, it looks awful. But like, it looks <laughs> awful. Is but it like survival too? I think it is because you are like surviving a Godzilla attack. You are not Godzilla. You are just a human trying to survive the Godzilla attack. And it's such a good premise. It looks awful. Hopefully, if that ever happens again, maybe they'll give it a little bit more attention. But I think that's a great premise. Well, that would be easy. Just find somewhere like 
structural wise sound and just like hunker down fetal position. <laughs> Pray to your God. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, fuck this. I, I keep running into danger. Why? <laughs> well, guys, I, th- I think we all agree that, you know, the, the possibilities are endless with the whole Star Wars thing, man. I just really hope that some good, some good developers, good studios pick up and make some awesome games. Cause it's just such a, it's just such an awesome lore of that game. It's just, it's just the culture all on its own. And I uh, hope that game's going. But uh, but moving on, man, uh, kind of the main thing we wanted to talk about today, and this is, you know, this is typically something we would do at the beginning of the year. I know we're three months in at this point, but, um, you know, it kind of also provides some perspective. You know, I think if um, this question would have been asked, there would have been a couple other games that have been included that may not be included now because we got the game and saw what it actually was about. Um, but I would just want to ask, and we don't have to stick strictly to three. I know sometimes it's hard to narrow it down, but, uh, if you can, just pick your top three. We can add some, uh, some uh, you know, uh, runner-ups or uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, um, uh, honorable mention. Honorable mentions. There you go. Thank uh, you, man. Uh, so we, we can add as many honorable mentions as we'd like. But, uh, shout I'm, I'm out. Curious, I'm just curious to, you know, what is the top three games that you are most excited or most looking forward to that's coming out uh, in the remainder of 2021? Because there are a lot a lot of games coming out this year. So uh, I'm interested to hear what y'all top three are. Who wants to go first? Um, go ahead, sleep. Uh, one, uh, Ratchet & Clank for the PS5. That looks dope. I'm a big fan of Ratchet & Clank. So I can't wait for that one to come out. That's probably when I'll get my PS5. Um, uh, Biomutant. Biomutant is a game that has been a legend spoken in hallways that no one should ever speak in. Like, it's one of those things that's spoken in back alleys. You don't know if it's ever coming out, but they dropped the date, May 21st. So, nice. I'm going to assume. True. And the thing is, another thing is, and I, I think it was like Cyberpunk that did this. Like, they said they saw what happened to Cyberpunk and they just went quiet and just worked on it and didn't give any announcements until they were done. And, um,. So they say, and they're done, and they're ready to, and they actually got more money to work on it. So the game's bigger than it was gonna be. So I'm, I got, I'm pretty hyped for Biomutant. I hope it's as good as uh, what it looked like back in the day. And also God of War Two, um, you know, God of War Five, but yeah, you, know, you know. Um, I've I, heard they, I've heard they dropped the Ragnarok title. They dropped the Ragnarok title. Ah, man. That's what I've heard. I don't like the thing is it, they delayed it. I don't even know if it's probably coming out this year, but that's probably be the only one I'm really looking forward to. Good list, Southwest. What about you, Austin? Obviously, Halo. I'm gonna let. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. let when you say it. I'm gonna let you go into the details. Um, I was looking forward to then EA, and now hearing how EA is just kind of falling back on everything like you know like i think sleep mentioned earlier you know now they canceled anthem 2.0 mm-hmm. oh yeah yeah I saw that. So, so i was looking forward to that because i i had no problem with the first one yeah the only problem was the missions was repetitive there was no story behind it there was like, I guess, I think, like, the main whole thing was, like, five missions, but then everything else is just, like, going to random waves of enemies and shit. It's like a lack of content. And, uh, yeah, but the gameplay, the the flying, like, the whole, the suits, the javelins and everything, they that was sick. That was dope. Yeah. And I I hope somebody else can pick it up or whatever because that had a lot of potential to it. But then really I did. would say that um uh, one other one and again I kind of like different games would have to be I was really looking forward to the freaking Harry Potter game. Yeah, uh, that did look dope. That looked dope. Like you being able to make your own wizard and be your own thing. I don't care. You can say it's lame or child, but hey, I think that would be kind of fun to me. Like, who who's never thought about when they was a kid or even now, like fucking Merlin and shit like that, or you know, 
I mean, we share memes all the time, like, which pill would you take to have superpowers? I mean, that's basically the same damn thing, you know, being a wizard. Like, And I see, I wouldn't even say that's lame, man, because, you know, nowadays, like, it's not like back in the day when we grew up, when this stuff was considered nerdy. Now nerdy is considered cool. Like, you yeah. know, people talk about anime normally. Back in the day, if you talked about anime, you were weird. Like, yeah, but how is this going to, how is this story plot going to take place? Are you taking, is it taking place as, like, you know the beginning kind of plot error. I don't think it's good. I don't think books, it's or is you're going to be like more of the end, where like it's going to be a little bit more raw I type, think, and you're fighting more and everything. I think it's probably going to be like at the earlier parts of the book where it was just a world, and they're probably not even going to focus on the story, the main story at all. It's probably just going to be like more of just presenting the world to you. And actually, it might be even before the the main story happened. I think. I think isn't it supposed to be like way back in time? I was about to say I don't even think Harry Potter's in the game. Yeah, no, I, it's not. You're just a wizard. So is, yeah. is it a whole different like book type thing? Like, no, I think it's just like before all that stuff happened. You know, because the world's been around See, for like thousands of years. So I think now it's just, here's where I'm sorry, but here's where connect the connect unit that Xbox used to have could have profited more. And hear me out. There's a bunch of Harry Potter, uh, Harry Potter fans. Oh, yeah. What oh, you yeah. do is you turn around and you sell the different style freaking wands that they have as a controller type thing, too. Oh, bro. You know Nintendo's going to do that. And you, you use <laughs> that oh, wand, you use that wand, you know, to do your spells and all that shit. That would be fucking dope. Oh, dude, that would have, sell like, so hard. Wand controller. Dude, that would sell so hard. Mm -hmm. Like, people would buy but, that just th and not even play the game. <laughs> and again, having the different styles, how would they have like 10 or something different styles? Have, think of how many people would be like, oh, I want the Voldemort one, or hey, I want the, you know, Harry Potter. Man, they would make so much accessory money off that game. Bruh. Bruh. I agree for sure. Dude. Mm. Seeing the Kinect is, was actually fun. It was wasn't bad i mean we still play it i i mean i still have the original xbox that has a connect and we'll sit there and play connect sports and i mean but you see the connected thing I, it, it did the thing that we did you know where it has a good thing but they just don't do enough for it so it kind of yeah. just languishes because it's like what are you using it for they don't make it for enough you know the playstation has the same I, kind of uh motion control stuff with their controller but they don't use it for anything so it's worthless yeah, I I still have the Connect too because I still have the original day one Xbox One, but uh, and I had it hooked up for the longest time, but it just started getting creepy for a minute. Like we would be sitting there watching, you know, watching Netflix or something, and I come into the room and sit down, and then all of a sudden I'd be like, "Blue, blue, hello, John," and I didn't even do nothing. I just sat down. You know, oh, uh, you like, got. Hey, you need to go to GameStop. They're like twenty bucks. There's like these little shields you can put over them. I got one. And you put over it and just turn off Cortana. Well, I liked having it on there when I could use my voice when I could use my voice commands when I could say Xbox or oh. that. You know, yeah, well then just put that slip cover on. Yeah, just put that no, slip cover on, and then uh, it it won't recognize you coming in. And you want to well, have curious. Mark Spencer in your, in your living room. Well, I'm curious if I can use it to stream to Twitch off the Xbox and what the quality uh, what the quality of the picture would be. Um, like people you, used to use them like that. That's how like a lot of original people started streaming. Kind of back in the day, was using a Kinect camera. Yeah, you yeah. used to be able to. It's the same thing as using the PlayStation Eye. That you know, like you can use that, and and then you could capture yourself while you're playing the game, and then you could just stream the game straight to Twitch and stuff like yeah. that. Like you should be able to do that with Xbox as well, I believe. You know, as long as you have a camera mm -hmm. function. Well, so. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and get into mine. Uh, before I say my top three, I'm gonna just list a couple games that I've kind of written down um, that I'm I'm pretty pumped about. And you know, obviously, I'm not gonna be able to get all these games. Some of them are PlayStation exclusives and great all that, but there's a lot that look really good. Uh, the Outriders game, y'all seen that? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have seen that. I, I I'm still on the fence about it. I gotta wait till it comes out before I can really judge it. But um, it looks decent. I'm yeah. waiting for every game to come out before I get it now. Fuck a pre-order. I'm sorry. Excuse oh, yeah. my language, but yeah. fuck a pre-order now. 
Yeah, there'll I, be a few that I'm. There'll be a few that I'm going to pre-order just so I can get the the the, the beta the collectors. Stuff, but, yeah, yeah, but I, I'm 100 percent with you, man. Um, the other game that's coming out this year, and I, I can't remember the name of it, but like you, you're like a werewolf. What? Uh, uh, Team Wolf video game? No. <laughs> no. Michael J. Fox in. No. <laughs> Your choice is this, football or basketball. I can't remember the name of it right now. There's a werewolf game. I just want to add that in there. Was it the crap game. werewolf game that just came out? I don't think it's out yet. Okay, good. Because uh, the one that just came out is garbage. So what are you, like a werewolf from, like, Twilight or something? Or, like, what's the asp- the concept I'm of the not, game? I'm not, e- I'm not even sure. Um, I just oh, remember just seeing stuff shit. about it. I, just, I, I don't even have that written down. I just kind of thought about it off the fly. Um, the other game is, like, Crossfire X. A mm. huge hit in Asia. Um, they're, you know, expanding over to Europe and America now with the first-person shooter. I, I think it could definitely have some potential. Uh, it could be, you know, pretty fun. Um Diablo 2 Resurrected. Mm. I'm, normally, I'm normally not very hyped about, you know, remake games or whatever, but Diablo 2 is just a classic. It does look good, too. You know, they, they, they graphically improved it quite well. We yeah, should sure. adapt more titles from that, you know, from them countries because, you know, America has started favoring, like, or should I not say America, but a majority of the mass has kind of started turning to a lot of, you know, like foreign culture lately in eastern games like like check genshin impact and uh and the other impact games like those got super big overnight but i didn't want to cut you off john finish your list no yeah, no you're good, man. You're good. Uh, another game that's been super hyped that you know keeps getting you know stuff pushed back and all that is, is elden ring uh, uh did you see the leaks i saw a few of them yeah did, were you as unimpressed as i was yeah, I was saying when I saw them, it, it didn't. It look, I was excited when I saw that there was a leak. I was super excited, and then when I saw it, I was like, eh. "It looks like Souls. It just looks like Souls. That's all it looks yeah. like." I'm like, "Bro, what is this? This is Souls." Yeah, hey, you can I, remake anything, put under a different title, dude. There's a lot of hype for that game, so I'm interested to see what happens. The mm. the, uh, the the other game that's, that looks interesting is the Warhammer Forty Thousand uh, Dark Tide. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that looks that looks super dope. I think that could be really fun. Uh, making that Warhammer into a first person shooter kind of situation looks cool. Uh, it, it, would it be earlier. first person shooter with like the dungeon type feeling? Still, uh, I think I think so. Yeah, I believe kind of like killing dope. Really that would be dope. Is it kind of like Killing Floor? <laughs> I never played that, but uh. I don't. No, Killing the killing floor that uh, that I remember when you say that's from Jackbox King. Oh no no this it it's one of those games that you 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 kind of just like fighting hordes. Oh uh, well, that, yeah. that's probably that's probably going to end up being what it's like. Yeah. It's going to be like a a horde game or vermin. Uh, you you kind of got to get through maps like Doom type shit. Yeah. But we t- we talked about this briefly earlier. Is Death Loop? Now that is a PlayStation exclusive, but it does look pretty dope. I'm interested to see. Um. Resident Evil Village is coming out this year. That seems, you know, that's something that we definitely got to at least check out. Oh yeah. Um, I'd say cool. one that, that I'm interested in is called Back for Blood, and it's made by the the. Uh, it comes out in June, and it's made by the Left for Dead creators. Hmm. And right. it's not te- it's not technically a Left for Dead two, but it looks just like it. You know what I mean? So it's like a spiritual successor. Yeah, I mean it's it's awesome. I, I love Left for Dead. The Left for Dead titles were awesome. Um, a game that I was super. I was super pumped about man that it came out. It's already out, but it's it's only for the Series X, and of course I haven't got the Series X yet. But is the medium? Mm-hmm. Um, heard it did well too. Game, yeah, I've heard of this that it's done really well. That it, that they've kind of pulled it off great, and uh, the whole dual world. It it just looks awesome. I'm I'm excited to play that uh, once I get the the Series X. Um, game that I'm definitely going to be picking up uh, that we can play on the Switch and get some streaming out of it is this Monster Hunter Rise. Mm. Uh, that is a, that that is a mm-hmm. switch a switch exclusive. Um, Have you I, played I the one for Xbox and PlayStation? You Monster world Hunter world. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. I, I haven't played it like in, in depth or anything, but I've definitely played it. It's a uh, it's a dope game. Yeah. So uh, how did you feel about like the start of it? It's a little confusing, but yeah. You know. But I tell you, I tell you, if you look at the other Monster Hunter games in that, you know, not world, but the other ones, they're even more confusing. Oh, so. way more yeah. confusing. That was actually the most streamlined Monster Hunter there's ever been. So, you yeah. Know. Aaron helped me through that, and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck to do. <laughs> but 
Well, Rod should be fun because I think you can have the four players on the Switch and all that. So, I mean, it, that could be a fun game to have on the Switch because I'm looking for more games on the Switch because I'm. I came pretty close to buying Luigi Mansion today just because I beat uh, Odyssey. But, you know, if you get Super Mario 3D World, there's online on well, that, so we can play hey, it online. And talking about the Switch, John, add in, too, and I'm, you know, totally forgot about it. Add in, too, something exciting is the new uh, Pokemon Snap coming out, Snap 2. Mm, Pokemon Snap. And, and then um, Pokemon Breath of the what Wild. Is it? Yeah, the Pokemon Breath of the Wild with our <laughs> our canine, um thing the whole open world of pokemon now like is that is that a snap game no no the snap game is a different game the open world pokemon is no open world pokemon is a separate game but it's the first time they've ever taken it out of the formula yeah yeah i'm I'm interested to see i mean i don't know if i'm gonna buy it but i'm I'm definitely interested to see how it goes oh you're only gonna be able to buy you're only gonna be able to buy nintendo don't rent bro they ain't got no way to get that without (laughs) buying (laughs) you right. Hey, you're but right. they do have like the controller, like, and again, that's what kind of led my mind to go with the the Harry Potter wand and everything. But the Pokemon games does have a uh, controller; it's a Pokeball, and you can actually use it to walk around with. And you, that's how you catch your Pokemon. You throw it at like oh, that's the crazy. screen. That's dope. That's crazy. But Nintendo so. always trying to mess people's TVs up. <laughs> oh, thankfully it comes with a wrist strap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Just Next thing you know, you got bars on your TVs. Like, well, Dad, why is there metal grates on the TVs? <laughs> Nintendo's at it again, son. <laughs> yeah, be like, I'm getting tired of y'all throwing shit at it. Was that one meme yeah. where it was like, we need a new TV? Well, we already have one. Uh, well, when that one breaks, we'll get one. And then he gives his kid a, 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 a Wii <laughs> controller. <laughs> like, this is when this, Nerf this needs to start collabing thing. with controllers. Like, hey, we're gonna build, we're gonna like Nerf your controller out, so when it hits your TV, it just bounces off. No, dude, it reminds me. My dad back in the day used to have this. He's a huge Vikings fan, and he used to have this this styrofoam. It wasn't even star. It was just like a foam brick, and it was like it was like you know with Viking stuff on it. So when he got mad at the game, <laughs> he could pick up he could pick up that brick and, and throw, it throw it at the TV, TV. and it wouldn't hurt anything. Uh, well, that's because back in the day, too, you could probably throw a real brick at a, t- a TV back in the day and still not break it. Bro, shit. One of the big-ass tank TVs that you drop and crack your floor and shit like that. Yeah. The, the brick would take more damage than the TV. Uh, you guys remember the TV on top of the TV? Yeah, on top of the TV. <laughs> the TV on the like, TV. We don't get rid of we don't get rid of our TVs. It's a fuck. It's a damn stand now. <laughs> that's ridiculous. It's, the TV but, is a TV uh, stand. <laughs> but but real quick, guys, moving on. Some some of the games, some of the rest of the ones that I've kind of written down here before I get into my actual three, um, is Shadow Warrior 3. Uh, now, that is actually coming out as a PC exclusive, which was shocking to me. Um, uh, give it a year. Of course, that's, yeah, that, that's a Dune kind of game. Um, um, it looks, looks super dope. I would love to play that. Um, game that I'm actually kind of pumped for. I've only played one of them, uh, but I'm pumped for Wolf Sleepy's ass in it, is Guilty Gear Strive. Have you oh. seen that one, Sleepy? Oh, yeah, I have, man. Now, there's been some changes to Guilty Gear, from Guilty Gear uh, Exert to Strive, so I'm interested to see how it feels in my hands, because Guilty Gear's been away for a long time, and they, they made a lot of changes to the fighting system. So I'm interested. It's definitely a classic. Yeah, definitely. Oh, man, great game. Wonderful. It's Arc Systems. They make the best fighters out in 2D, at least. Well, and then the other two that I have written down here is Lord of the Rings Gollum, wow. which really, I don't know if you guys have seen this or not, but it's going to be a Lord of the Rings game from Gollum's perspective. Mm, I've seen that. So it's going to kind of be like a parkour kind of stealth game stealth kind of situation. That sounds horrible. Stealthy, <laughs> defense To be real with you, it sounds like the worst part of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I mean, depending on how yeah. they do it, it might be actually kind of like pretty fun. You know, you sitting there being able to like scale rocks all fast and shit yeah. like that. But when you like... play Lord of the Rings, right? The last character you want to play is is Gold. Right, right. The, uh, yeah, but 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 you know, it, it looks interesting. The the little thing that I watched about it, looked, you know, it piqued my interest a little bit. But um, and then there's Gotham Knights also coming out, which yeah. you know the the Arkham series mm-hmm. has been awesome. So I, I'm interested. I'm interested to see how they do Gotham Knights. I think if they add too many um, secondary characters other than Batman, they might lose some people. But well, Batman's, uh, especially... that's what Batman's dead. That's that what. 
Well, go ahead. Batman's dead. Well, that's what I'm, well, I, that's what I'm saying. You know, they start adding all these other characters. I don't know hey, how but, well they're going to do with them. That's what DC needs to do, though, is basically GTA a Batman. Make a Batman game GTA style, but in the day, mostly you're Bruce Wayne, and you're kind of like in your training phase, and then at nights when you, you know, obviously you come the dark night, and like you just have like, you just pop off different crimes. You can take your Batmobile or whatever and all that shit. That'd be, hey, that'd be freaking dope. That's basically what I did in Cyberpunk. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was that's what I did too. <laughs> but that would be dope for a good Batman game. But um, it would be that would be a really dope Batman game. The uh, but I'll tell you what. So the, my actual three that I wrote down, those are just kind of the the honorable mentions that I you know I'm keeping an eye on. I'd be interested to see what how, how they look or whatever. But the three, um, and one of these I'm not gonna be able to. Get, uh, the three, the one of them I'm not going to be able to get because I'm not buying a PS5. But um, the first one's Far Cry Six. Mm. Um, Far Cry is such an awesome series, man, and like this one just looks pr- the most promising out of the ones that I've seen in a long time. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Far Cry uh, Six is only going to be on PS5. No, 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 not Far Cry Six. Uh, the next one that I'm going to say is only on PS5. Oh, okay, okay, uh, my bad. But but far, uh, yeah, I'm sorry for that confusion. Uh, Far Cry Six uh, definitely looks super dope. Um, can't wait for that. I'm definitely looking forward to when that comes out. Uh, that will be a for sure pickup for me. It's one of those games I'm going to pre-order, whether it's good or not. Have you played I'll five? Be... I have. Uh, not, not in depth. I haven't beaten it or anything like that. But I have it's pretty it. dope. I got all the way to the end. It is. The controls, but... just the story. The... It, it's it's pretty dope. Well, and then the next game is the one that I was talking about, the PS5 exclusive. I wish that they would release it on the PS4 as well, uh, because I do own a PS4, but. Uh, is God of War, uh, Ragnarok, God of War 2, whatever they're going to call it. Uh, you know, it's funny for me being such an Xbox guy. Uh, God of War is one of my favorite video games of all time, you know, video game series of all time. So uh, I haven't had a PlayStation for the longest time. Since a, since a PS2, I haven't owned a PlayStation. So uh, when I do play them, I'm playing with Sleepy or whatever. But you know, I have PS4 three. now, so I'm, I'm finally being able to talk, uh, play this, this original God of War game. And just the first... Four hours of the game already has me super pumped for Ragnarok. Uh, and then the final game, obviously, is uh, that I'm the most pumped about, uh, despite what any hater may say, is Halo Infinite. Um, you know, so that's I, why I, I saved thinking, it for last. Yeah, that, I saved the best for last, man. That game, I can't wait. Uh, you know, maybe it'll suck, maybe it won't. I don't really care. I love Halo 5. Nobody talks shit about so, it. So, so have they announced all the modes yet? They have not. Not that I've seen. Um, I wonder if they're going to incorporate like every past mo they had and like all the past. Well, they're keeping it pretty close to the vest right now. They're keeping it pretty close to the vest. I have seen there's been some petitions because they came out and said that they are not going to offer a battle royale mode. Uh, Uh, Yeah, I'm not worried about that shit. Right, I don't like that shit anyway. But but you know it's the craze these days. Everybody's playing Warzone and all this kind of stuff. So they're they're there's well, they had a war, they had a mode on there called Warzone before it was before Warzone was around. Warzone was around, and then like they have firefight and um, what's that other big battle one? Uh, war, Warzone and Halo was when you had two big teams, and they had to take over three of the um, bases and everything. Yeah, I before don't you could destroy the able... other core. I don't think they're ever going to be able to successfully make a Halo Battle Royale mode. I think that they can try, but it's not going to work well. It just goes against the, it goes nah. against the style of Halo. Style of, well, the style of Halo is very much a run and gun kind of game. You die. It, a it lot, would be dull lot. anyways because everybody has the same weapons. You know, right. yeah. In Halo Five, there was a bunch of variations of the same weapon, but. It's in yeah, general I mean, still the same weapon, I, so I mean, I, what's I the point of Battle Royale? I just, for me, I just love Halo in general. Um, you know, like I said before, I love Halo Five. Everyone else talks shit about it. I thought it was. I played I it. it was, I, I, yes, yeah, I played I with it you. Was fun. Uh, I do too. Yeah, I like four also. Halo. I did too. I, I liked, liked everyone. All of them. Uh, 
Um, you know, so this one, you know, has a lot of promise to it. I'm interested to see what 343 does. But, you know, it's no secret Halo is what brought me to consoles in the first place. You know, I was a PC gamer until Halo came out. And, uh, well, Halo 2 came out. And that, that is what brought me to the console. So, um, you know, that's I'm what super... led me to buy Xbox. Exactly. Is me too. Because that's, you, that's exactly I'd come over Xbox. your house like almost every other day. We'd play Halo. And then when I had enough money, I got me an Xbox 360 at the time because then. And there was time, man, you'd come over. Yeah, there, there was a time of shit. You walked down the street, brought your Xbox, and we sit there and played Dreamcast and Xbox all night. Yeah, yeah. The uh, it's good times, bro. The, the uh, you know, Halo just has a special spot in my heart, man. It always will. Uh, it's like I said before, it's going to be available to me for free on the on the Game Pass, and I'm still yeah. going to go buy. I'm still going to go buy the CD hey, uh, you, just because it just is what it is to me. Do you think uh, Craig's going to be a skin? I hope they keep them exactly the same. Yeah, like, <laughs> like for real. Like, I think if Xbox made Craig a skin, that would be like one of the biggest, like, you know, just like self-deprecating jokes where you know it's like, it's like hey, we're in on the joke kind of thing. You know, like, you know, it just shows that we're good sports about it. Yeah, I, I, think, I think that's the, what they should do. Yeah. I hope they keep the skins on Halo the way they are. Like, you can change your armor, just the the way your armor looks and the color up and the way your helmet looks, like. Well, you know, there's a lot of stuff coming out with, about this Halo Infinite. Like, they're not going to be making... This is going to be kind of like the final Halo game. And what they're going... Instead of making it uh, Halo 6, Halo 7, Halo 8, or whatever... Halo they're gonna, Infinite. They're, yeah, they're going to have Halo Infinite. They're just going to have different seasons of it. You know, they're going to continue on for years, I guess. That should scare uh, you. I, I mean, Halo 5's been does. doing it. So uh, yeah. why not? No, that, every other video game that's out anymore does that. No, I mean, that's what, and that should scare you, bro. Because check it, that's Destiny, that's Wildlands, that's like every other game that says, "Hey, we're gonna make a, we're gonna be a, a live service." And I'm like, that means that everything you love is going to be chopped up and and sold to you. We're gonna <laughs> make you make you give you an endless game. Yeah, that every, it's, it's probably going to be that way. It's probably what's going to end up happening. I mean, hey, War uh, Warcraft's doing it. Why can't somebody else do it? Because it's trash. It's trash for Warcraft well, too. For the gamers, uh, you know. yeah. but I'm still going. I'm still going to get it. I don't, if that's what it is, that's what it is. But uh, so you know, it, if it ends up, if it ends up not quite panning out, I'll just, it, it'll be like Cold War. I was kind of excited for Cold War, and was what if Halo? It, and I finally got it, and I was like, yeah. Yeah, well, what if Halo's taking a book out of what the new Final Fantasy kind of just did, to where like the DLCs of the new final fantasy once you got done with the game they started to release the dlc for um the pers- like in other games their perspectives of the, the different other characters well like the thing is with final fantasy the online one it when they mm-hmm. first came out it was like the biggest trash fire that ever existed so they had to remake it completely and then eventually it I'm became about really the, good the one for xbox with a uh, prince nordic oh what 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 Final Fantasy is that? Uh, fourteen. You mean the online, the online one? No, it's not online. It's a console game. Hmm. Um, give me one second, and I got you. It's probably trash. Everything after thirteen has been no, trash. No, it's good. Except for the online one. Everything. I after don't know my Roman good. numerals, so <laughs> Final Fantasy XV. That's fifteen, right? Oh yeah, right. fifteen. Fifteen's trash. Uh, I enjoyed it. I love it. I'm I'm playing through it again because all the DLCs are through. I'm going to make this very quick. I played it when it came out. It was missing story in an RPG that they sold you in DLC. In an RPG. Bruh, that's <laughs> inexcusable, bro. Yeah, but you was only <laughs> going through one character's eyes at that time. True, so but, and then they and then they sold you the other character's stories in an no, RPG. No, you get it for free. I got it for I got them all for free. No, they sold them first, bro, and then they sold them for free after it got such a bad well, that's, reception. That's why I'm replaying it, bro, because it's for free on Game Pass. See, Game Pass number one, Xbox number one. <laughs> That's like, I'm getting the whole story now for free, bro. Oh, I ain't man. pay a dime, bro. So, so basically, you didn't pay a dime for more trash. 
because that game is trash, bro. That story I is enjoy trash. It. That story I enjoy it. I like the trash. fighting style of it, man. Fi- no turn based shit. It was one of, like we, that- we can go on all day, <laughs> like, all night. But you, we need to kind of go on to this Halo back, back to Halo because y'all got dungeons, drag dungeons and DD to go to. <laughs> no, not tonight. Not tonight. That's, that's but tomorrow. he, uh, he, uh, <laughs> if, if if that game was a indie game, Sleepy would be singing its praises. No, yeah, yeah because they be. they literally like because if they sold you the story in an RPG, he'd be riding it. Like like I can't tell be you, riding it. I can't I can't tell you how egregious that like, is. Bro. XYB like, came out with the greatest Final bro, Fantasy game. Like I can't <laughs> I can't tell you how egregious that is, bro. You know, if you ever heard of Ozzer's rap, they sold you the ending. Like you didn't get the real ending unless you bought it. Do you understand how egregious that is in an RPG? Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah, like that. Like you can't do like Final. That's the first time Final Fantasy has ever done that, bro. And they paid for it. Well, well I, I, will mean, say, I will say this over here. He's not knocking me for Final Fantasy, and he playing Overcooked, making meals for other people. Yeah, but that's <laughs> but that's like that's like fifteen dollars. That's like fifteen dollars. I love you, sleep. I'm messing with you, bro. That's like fifteen dollars, <laughs> and it's a better game than and it's a better game than Final Fantasy. <laughs> you paid fifteen bucks. I got a free on Game Pass. Ooh. No. This man's this man's wearing an apron while he's doing the podcast right now. I know. Yeah. <laughs> That's because I know how to Over cook. Here. <laughs> they put an egg on their burger. Don't forget the egg on their burger. Lettuce and tomato. Check it though. Ketchup, mustard, and mayonnaise. Ch- check it though. Overcooked. Not on a sesame seed bun. Check it. it. Bruschetta. Check it. Overcooked's a better game because they put the whole story in it the first time, and then they didn't say a chunk of it. it's like, "Hey, uh, Ignis, what are you doing?" Oh, yeah, wait, wait. You, you need you need to wait thirty days before the DLC comes out before you can know what I did. Oh man, that was a good laugh. All right, all right, all right. All right. To round it back over to the Halo Infinite, man. Um, you don't know, have a whole lot more to say, but I will say that I've enjoyed um, my little hiatus from my first person shooter multiplayer games. Um, and you know, enjoying the single player games that I've been playing, um, but I will say that I am just as pumped for Halo Infinite as probably any game in recent memory, other than Call of Duty World War II. Um, so you know, I, I am definitely pumped. I will be abandoning pretty much every other aspect of life to play that game. So notice the, how uh, we all left the new Call of Duty off our excited list. I'm not excited. <laughs> you know, I don't the, give a shit no more. The slave. The slave that's in me will probably buy it anyway, just because. But you're the I'm reason. Not, I'm not. You're the reason. I'm not interested. <laughs> like, every well, time you do that, you're me, the reason they shit on it. Well, it's true. It's true. But for me, you know, it, it the reason they get you is because when it comes to games like that, uh, the fun is playing with the homies. And you know, I had the hardest time. I mean, this it's no secret. Two death um, made its resurgence, and it kind of came back off the back of Call of Duty. Uh, and so a lot of our followers, a lot of our, um, you know, members of our clan, a lot of the members of everything else that's going on are all, uh, heavy call of duty players. Uh, you know, I'm trying to get them to branch out. Like I, I, I got three or four of them to branch out and buy gears five and Austin was the only one that would ever play. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it, it wasn't, they, they weren't fans of gears five and they say that they're going to play halo. So I'm really pumped that they will. I know Tyler will I know Austin will, but, uh, Chris Durbin said he, he's down to play, but. Uh, I'm really hoping that the squad will kind of move over to Halo because that's what makes online multiplayer games fun. You know, I exactly. I'm not, not going to hop on Call of Duty or fucking Halo for that matter. I'm not going to jump on and just play by myself unless I'm trying mm-hmm. to grind. Unless I'm trying to grind the level up or something. I'm not. I'm not going to just sit there and just play by myself. The fun of it. So you quiet, prefer. But. You prefer to play with your homies. Oh, absolutely. That's that's the whole purpose of those kind of I'm games. I'm the so same I'm way with the online games. multiplayer. I'm just so yeah, much the sure. opposite, like because like I prefer my homies not to interfere in my game. Like, <laughs> See, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. If I were if I'm playing a multi if I'm playing a single player game, mm. then yeah, I'm gonna grind it out. But if I'm gonna play a multiplayer game, I'm gonna play it with my homies. No, I get. And if like my that. homies ain't gonna play that game, then I'm gonna play me a single player game. Yeah. Yep, I, I'm, that's that's kind of where I'm getting at this point too, um, and, and I feel sleepy like with the single player games. Kind of like, don't fuck with my fantasy. Like, don't, 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 mess, don't mess up the 
what I'm doing here. But with the with the first person shooters, man, in the multiplayer games, you know, it's not like you're it's not like it's taking a whole lot of mental agility to you know, or you know, to play this game or remember it or whatever. It's all reaction and, and knowing the map. But it's just fun playing with the boys, man. Like I can't tell you that's what that's what, you know, really probably honestly, if I'm just being honest, has kept me a gamer for as long as I've been as passionate as I've been is because of the, the camaraderie that I've had. It's this the whole purpose of Tuda and the whole purpose of the community that we're building and the the mission statement behind us is all about that community building and that's in that community building um, largely, you know, not all, but largely is uh, is predicated on multiplayer games. Uh, yo, what's up, Justin Doggett? How you doing, bro? Uh, but uh, what's up, brother? But yeah, so I mean, you know, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely be making my resurgence back into multiplayer gaming when Halo comes out. So I'm hoping that uh, that everybody out there will will join me. Hey, I'm gonna be right there, man. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> it's gotten a little late here, guys, and um, I think we've reached the end of what we needed to talk about because I gotta get up in for work in the morning, like everybody else. You know, I'm not special. Yep, yep. I'm not special. Some but, form of work. Yeah, some form of work. And I, you know, uh, but with that being said, I'd like to thank everybody who came out today. I'd like to thank uh, uh, Dean for coming out as well as even Ali, who wanted to sell us something. Didn't get it, but hey, <laughs> thanks for showing out, man. Like, for he real. He tried. For real, he tried. I can't, I can't even knock the hustle, bro. Like, you don't is ask, he trying you to sell? Ask. Like, He's trying to say that he'll share our page to 200 different groups in Facebook about sending $10 on a Google Play card. The, uh... <laughs> Damn, that sounds like a straight scam. $10 Google Play card. What this, what this dude going to buy? What this dude trying to buy on a Google Play card, bro? bro Pokey coins or some shit? I mean... For a minute now, man, and I'll say I'm not going to knock the hustle, bro. Like, if you don't ask, the answer is always always going to be no. So I mean, but yeah, I mean, shit, why not Venmo me like 10 bucks? I mean, <laughs> w- w- like, what the hell are you going to do with a Google Play card? I mean, shit. Well, there's a lot of groups out there that are doing similar to what we're doing that might not have the, you know, the following base that we have of over 4,000 people following us that would take them up on that offer. I mean, $10 to share. I, mean, I feel that. To get, your, to get your reach out there or whatever, you know, I, I can understand how someone may fall for that, but, mm-hmm. you know, but we're, yeah. we're, we're doing, we're doing we just ain't, fine on our own. Yeah, we ain't you know. desperate, man. Yeah, but still, yeah. though, can't knock the hustle, bro. You know, do you, man. Can't knock it, right? can't Yeah, good it, try, bro. brother. Good, I can't knock the hustle, but hey, with that being said. DM me. We'll come up with a better scam. <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, though, thank everybody for coming out. We like you all to come out and interact with us. Please hit us up on YouTube, Twitch, go, um, uh, YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the social media outlets. We love you coming out. We love you interacting. We love the community, and we want the community to form and get bigger and bigger. And also, come out to Rocket League, man. We want more Rocket League. But um, hell yeah. yeah. And join us tomorrow for, uh, what is it, episode seven? Uh, of yes, Dungeons of Dungeons and Dragons. Dragons why, how, why we wage war D-D. against, we, warred, we wage war pathetically against Strahd. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, guys, uh, thanks for coming out, and uh, we will see you later. Hey, like, True. subscribe, man. Two dev. Two dev.